that love him for the good of them who are called according to his purpose. Our address, physical services, 1069th row, King in Johannesburg. My number is plus 27824569264. We shall surely be blessed. May God bless you and I look forward to receiving you. Amen. Amen. This is Abi Adeniba. I'm the pastor of Shekinah Fellowship Ministry, and I'd love to give you this invitation to you and your family to join us on our services. On Sunday morning at half past nine is Bible class, and also at 10 a.m. is our celebration service till 12 noon. And also we stream these services from 10.30 for those of you who cannot make it to in-person service from half past 10 to 12 noon as well. And I want to just encourage you that come the way you are. And I promise you, by the will of God, you will leave a different person. Also, our midweek service is Tuesdays at half past six on Tuesday. That's a live broadcast on my Facebook at facebook.com. And that we give you curriculum from our Shekena Institute, which is on leadership and entrepreneurs. So please join us and you'll be blessed. Our address for in-person service is 106 9th Road, King, St. Johannesburg. My number, my WhatsApp is plus 27824569264. I look forward to receive you and may God bless you for receiving this invitation. God bless. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is Abe Adeniba. I'm here once again tonight. Um, this evening, uh, quite starting a bit earlier than the usual time because of the um, the load shedding that we're going through in some part of South Africa, Johannesburg particularly. And um, this has, you know, caused this program to start earlier than uh, scheduled. And um, notwithstanding, I'd like to thank you that are watching, and I'd like to welcome you who's watching for the first time. My name is Abe Adeniba, and I'm the director of Shekena Institute, uh, which is part of the Shekena Fellowship Ministry. Our Shekena Institute is where we conduct training for believers and also leaders and entrepreneurs. And so tonight, I continue on the series on resilience which is the in word for uh the moment that we want to you know share and encourage you and you know just to get you into you know this power of resilience because the, the resilience is within you and it comes from within you and you need to engage it and that is why the Lord has so this in my heart to uh, share with you about resilience and to encourage you in this word resilience. Let us pray. Father, we thank you tonight. I give you all the glory for enabling this session tonight. And I want to pray, Lord, for the presence of your Holy Spirit to be with us in this studio and also your presence to be with those who are listening that they will be able to assimilate and to articulate this word resilience in the time and tough times and difficult times that we are seeing in the world and lord i pray that by faith they will come out of every form of depression discouragement despondency in the name of jesus but i bless your word tonight in jesus name amen so you are welcome tonight um we have been taking you on the strength of resilience that is engaging resilience tonight we're going to look at the, the components of resilience in other words the word resilience yet yeah, is a capability and uh, the ability to cope in tough times and to be restored in to you know your previous level or whatsoever or to be reintegrated as i said last week but then when we talk about the resilience there are components of it there are certain attitudes that you need to develop in order to really uh, be a person of resilience and that is what i'm going to be sharing 
tonight. So now um, we stopped I mean, around the you know the 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 aspect of reintegrating yourself into your profession, your business, those things that you were enjoying before the pandemic. Or perhaps, you know, your, your life, your peace, just before whatever that may have caused you a trauma or depression, and you trying to be resilient about this whole situation. And one of the things I mentioned last week is for us to, uh, to, to have the mind, you know, and determination to be reintegrated into what you do best into what you love to do or into that life that you love to live your life in christ your 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 service in the ministry your calling and i mean reaching out to people so you cannot remain where certain situation has left you you need to be resilient you cannot remain where the economic depression may have cost you um, some professional hindrances. You need to rise. You cannot stay where the incidents that may have happened in your ministry or in your church, for example, to keep you where you will not be able to fulfill your calling. And that's why this word is coming for you to engage resilience. In other all words, for you may be able to reintegrate yourself into your very calling. And I made several examples uh, last week. But today I want to focus on the components. Now, in my theory of um, resilience, I came up with about five elements. There are five elements or components in engaging resilience. According to my theory of resilience, they are namely flexibility. Consistency, commitment, confidence, discipline, and prayers. Hallelujah. And so we're going to be taking these one by one. I hope I'm able to take you as much far I can do tonight because of my limited time. Now, it may be possible that um, not all these elements or components will gel with you, but at least one or two of them will fit in your grit to bounce back and that is what we want to achieve to bounce back to get back into what you do best and that's why you need to be resilient you know so number one we want to look at tonight is flexibility flexibility is an integral part component of a resilient person you have to be flexible so flexibility is what we want to look at tonight. Flexibility also means adaptability or fluidity. That is, you need to be fluid. So resilience, as we know, is elastic, is an elasticity of material. Let me just give you that this definition. Resilience is an elasticity of material substance. And also, in human beings, the ability to be stretched and come back into shape. That is, it's in, you know, we can say that it's impossible in this world to avoid occasional stress. But it is human that we go through stress and we're able to de-stress or come out of it. So the flexibility is one of those components that you must exercise if you want to be a resilient person. So you have to be flexible in certain conditions so that you can break through from the period of difficulties or the period of toughness such as we have witnessed in the past few months. And so, for example, if you look at flexibility, let me use just one substance to explain to you. Look at a piece of nylon or you call it plastic, you know, called nylon or plastic now if if you take a piece of nylon and stretch it or you squeeze it after some seconds it comes back into a shape or into the very size that you found it and th that's what flexibility is it applies to materials that are elastic, and so it is to human being. And I'm saying you too can be flexible 
It's inborn in you. You are not a static being. You are an elastic being. You are able to adjust. You are able to adapt as any other organism which changes habitat or within certain habitat or condition of the habitat. And so tonight we are saying that you know a component character of a resilient person is the capability to be flexible, the fluidity of yourself in adjusting to new situations. Such new situations might be the changing times that you find yourself, the changing times that comes up, maybe you are trying to establish an enterprise or a business idea. So it's so important that to, to receive this idea by taking some of this component and begin to apply it in your situation. And you will, sh you know, the tough time or difficult times will be short lived because now you are engaging a component of being a resilient person. In other words, your ability to resist the difficult time, the pain of the moment, and also by adjusting to the inconvenience of the times. And that is what, you know, flexibility will help you to get into all fluidity. Now, so we are looking at change of times. For example, we've seen the pandemic circumstances and we have seen the ensuing economic changes. And the way people are riding this change in economy is by being flexible, by being adaptable to the change that came with the economic conditions. And that is perhaps the way of doing the business, the way of supplies chain, have changed so much time, the ways that you market your product have come to change, especially the impact of technology. So when you are flexible, you are able to ride the time even though it is difficult, even though you know it's not as buoyant as it used to be. That is flexibility. So flexibility and fluidity are key characteristics of a resilient individual Perhaps even an organization. Organization is run by individuals. So when we look at organization on its own, the ability of that organization to respond to change. And that is also a flexibility or fluidity that can be established in the difficult times where we need to be resilient. No matter how long it takes, you know, for you to get back you know, or be re-established in the marketplace. So your organization also needs to be flexible in its approach, in its market development, or, you know, or developing new clients. You need to be flexible. You cannot remain the same and expect a change. You know, there's a word that says that we cannot keep on doing the same thing and expect a change. So we are saying tonight, for you to engage, you know, this resilient this component, which is flexibility, is so important for individuals and uh, who are in business and even career. It, you know, if you are, there's a lot of change that have come up right now that you know, for you to get back, reintegrate yourself to that career industry, you need to be flexible. You must be fluid. You know, not, in other words, you know, you have to be fluid so that you can fit in and spread your wings. Now, we're looking at this, what makes flexibility also possible is your humility. Why am I bringing humility? Because humility, you know, makes possible this flexibility. Because humility is submission to a situation beyond your control or submitting to the reality of the moment and say, how can I take the best advantage of the moment? You may need to exercise this humility in order for you to be flexible. You may have to enter into some renegotiation. You may have to enter into you know, uh, a new discussion as to retain your position where you have a competitive advantage. So flexibility, I'm bringing the word humility. You need to be humble in order to be flexible. In order to be fluid, you need to be humble about the present situation. 
So now when we talk about all uh, uh, um, flexibility, that means there is no rigidity because for you going through a difficult moment and you are being resilient, we're saying flexibility must be you know, your attitude, fluidity must be your attitude, adaptability, and also to make all this possible, you need to be humble about yourself to the reality of the moment. You know, such reality may be that your, your employer simply, you know, making some adjustment. Even your customers are making some adjustment. They may change the, the model of, of what they want, for example, or certain materials they demand from you, or certain supplies they demand, they demand from you. In fact, even if for, for, for some of us in ministry, you find that, that um, yes, we rely on the Spirit. We rely on the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost also teaches us what is meant for the moment for those that are listening to us. Just as I'm talking about resilience, is what the Spirit of God has encouraged in me, but I believe that it is an answer for someone who is questioning the difficult times. Yet, you are a child of God. You are questioning the difficult times. You are questioning why are things not working out? Why is this pandemic has suddenly made you to be out of job? But I'm saying, with your faith, you need to remain resilient. You need to be, remain resilient with your faith. So, there is no rigidity. There's no rigidity in this type of, you know, component. You cannot be rigid. You cannot be rigid. So, we need to be flexible. We need to demonstrate flexibility, you know, where we know that these circumstances is unavoidable. I mentioned a company that has to restructure in order for it to continue in the marketplace. And so you need to be flexible with what your company is doing, more particularly if you want to stay in that industry or you want to keep the job position. There may be need for you to be flexible with your company or organization. Amen. Now, you know, we pray that the Holy Spirit helps you during adversity during difficulties to have what is what I refer to as self-control instead of self-destruction or rigidity or being agitated. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. Because that is one of our beliefs in this institute, the Shekinah Institute. All our teachings is biblical based. And that's where we draw our inspiration from in order to lift you up in whatever circumstances or whereby you want God to promote your life. So, you, we need the help of the Holy Spirit in times of adversity, in times of difficulty, so that we can, you know, get back and be restored, you know, according to the will of God. So, there are insights that we need to gather in such a time like this to continually develop in our career, in our businesses, in our calling. So in a time that people are seeing difficulties, we in a time that, you know, unavoidable, you know, circumstances prevail. Resilience is what will make you to stay afloat. In fact, resilient is what will keep your dreams and your vision alive. And therefore I'm saying we need to be flexible. Now, the, 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 the Bible says in Galatians chapter 22, verse 23, it talks about this self-control. And I just want to touch a little bit about it. It said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And so self-control is also a capacity to be in control of your your life, your person, your emotions, to be in control, to be in control of your life, to be in control of, of your finances, to be in control of your relationship in a tough time, in a challenging time, so that you don't suffer a total breakdown or maybe disappointment. So when I'm bringing this self-control, it's a fruit of the Spirit. 
that we need also to apply when we want to be flexible, when we want to be adaptable, and the Holy Spirit will encourage us and strengthen you in such times. Now, looking at flexibility or fluidity during difficult times where we need to engage resilience, let's look at it from also leadership uh, leadership perspective. You know, a leader's capacity to be resilient helps the organization to survive turbulent period. A leader, a leader's capacity or ability to be resilient, to ride the rough times helps the organization or even a ministry church to, to survive the turbulent times. You know, because, you know, as a leader, the, the followers are looking at you. The followers look at your, your, your composure in a difficult time. You know, they look at your attitude to the crisis that the organization or the church may be going through. They look at your attitude. So, you know, resilience tends to, you know, uh, 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 you know, clamp, I wouldn't say clamp you, but it tends to put you in control of your life, put you in control of your emotions. That's what resilience means. While you are working on the way to get restored, you know, nobody can say it. You need to project the right attitude because followers and those who are working with you will be looking at your action they will be looking at your behaviors you don't have to be you know agitating or try to be snappy because of the poor business or you know people are not coming to church the the, the offering or the tithe perhaps is not coming in you know people watch and that is why i'm saying we need to be flexible we need to be flexible we need to be adaptable to the moment. That is how you engage resilience. Now, looking at this now, when we are with people that are looking up to us as leaders, they, they look at you know they look at our composure, as I've said, in the time of difficulty. They look at how quickly you are able to to recover from sudden difficulty disappointment in the in the in, in the organization and i have studied a few leaders in the moment of crisis and i want just start to mention a few but let me look at bible again i referred you to david account last session i talked about david and i saw a high level of resilience in david in the time of difficulty now is a unique situation here uh, was in First uh, Samuel chapter 30, David and his men, they returned from, you know, war. They returned to Siglag and found their camp being raided. They found the children and the women being taken away. Practically, the camp was empty. The enemy took their children and their wives, including the materials. And so what could happen? The Bible says, says that, and David was greatly distressed. He was distressed that the people spoke of stoning him. His men spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. So you, you, you can imagine that moment. And so it continues that, that every man was grieved for his sons and for his daughters. But the Bible says one thing that David encouraged himself in the Lord. In the Lord, his God. He encouraged himself. So you as a leader, you must have a point where, you know, you, you encourage yourself in the word of God. You have to find a way to encourage yourself in the moment of crisis so that you can be resilient of the moment of challenge. And so we saw in this story, then another one I'll point out to you is also, uh, I believe it's, it was in the book of Acts that Paul was traveling with uh, some uh, prisoners. Even he himself was a prisoner. He was traveling with these prisoners and they suffered a shipwreck. They suffered a shipwreck. You know, but earlier, 
you know, the God showed him, the angel of God showed him, showed him that, you know, this incident, you know, shall not lead to death. And so while they suffer shipwreck, Paul, who had received from the Lord a leader who has been seeking the face of God or who is close to his God, most at times, by the grace of God, you know, certain things are shown to you so that when you face those circumstances, you are able to be composed, you are able to, you know, to speak people into assurance of the Lord. And so, in that account as well, you know, Paul said to them, let no man's heart fail. For the Lord had revealed to him, the angel of the Lord revealed to him, that there shall be no death. There shall be no death. So, we, we can see those attitudes of biblical leaders, that in times of challenge, in times of crisis, they are well composed, they are flexible in the spirit, they adapt, but they hear from the Lord in order to release hope unto the people. So we need to prayerful and seek the direction of the Holy Spirit in every uh, uh, kind of crisis that may come within the organization. And so, now again, other uh, uh, examples is, for example, even in the political realm or in the corporate world, we have seen some leaders, you know, even though they don't believe, even though they are not believed. But one thing that worked for them uh, was their resilience at the time of crisis. You know, their capacity to be flexible at the time of crisis, challenges, you know. And that was how they were able to, to ride that period, you know, that tough times. They were able to. I remember it very well. Um, in the 9 11, uh, you talk about Rudy uh, Giuliani, was, I believe, was a mayor, not a governor. I think he was a mayor of New York. I mean, he his leadership uh, disposition during the 9 11 um, uh, 9 11 terrorist attack was, you know, was extraordinary. And it was well, you know, it was well um, commended for his leadership um, ability. To withstand that period of the 9/11 crisis, and that is what we see in in leaders. And so we need to, you know, uh, exert this leadership composure in the time of crisis about being flexible. You know, sometimes people like Giuliani they had sleepless night. They move from one place to the other until the whole city was cleaned. They need to see the, the, the firemen and the police and coordinating every structure within the city at the time of the crisis or attack. And that is what we need, that, you know, when there's, when there's crisis, there's challenges, in that period, as leaders, we need to be flexible. We need to be flexible. We need to get into every sector. And I want to also mention that as people in the church, we have come back to church. There are people that have stayed away. We need to, you know, be flexible and be communicating, making direct, um, direct contact. I mean, I've got many people on my on my WhatsApp that uh, I send WhatsApp to them, you know, just to make sure that you know we're in contact with them. It's not my department, but I do it, and that is being flexible for us, you know, to go through this moment that that uh, some worshippers or members are already despondent. Some of them, they are despondent and they are trying to also recover from the pandemic times. So, leaders, we have to be, you know, uh, flexible and, you know, get across our department. And so, that is it about flexibility, fluidity, adaptability to engage uh, um, resilience so those are components of resilience you cannot be you cannot say you are resilient and you are not flexible you have to be flexible amen now i'll just touch on the next one and um i would just give an introduction of that now the other one is prayer prayer is part of the component of being resilient so we need to you know to constantly you know pray unto our god Constantly seeking 
the divine intervention in a time of difficulty. And that's the prayer. And that's the next one that I will be discussing. So tonight, I would love to leave it here. We've discussed about being flexible as an element of resilience. And it's so important for you to understand it, uh, both for your personal self, your business, your company. No matter what your company is, 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 is doing or restructuring, you need to be flexible. Even the church organization, they may reshuffle certain things or people may, you know, have left their department as a leader. We need to be also to be flexible and adaptable to the condition of the people that are with us to understand their um, their emotional state and you know to put in quite a lot of a, a, a high level of emotional intelligence into our dealings and it's been part of being flexible to increase our social skill at the same time. So these are about being flexible with the time so that we can stabilize our people, stabilize the people that are with us in our workplace. Amen. Hallelujah. So I would love to leave it there tonight and I want to pray that the Lord will encourage you as a leader to be adaptable to the moment that we are all saying and also for the Lord to, to grant you more grace, you know, greater grace. Uh, he's a God of all grace and he will surely perfect you and he will surely establish you again into a higher level than what you have seen before. But you need to remain resilient. And I pray tonight that the Lord will be with you and grant you every favor that you need in this time, in the name of Jesus. So this has been Abi Adeniba, and um, I thank you for being with me today. And I pray that the Lord will surely bless you. Amen. For God works all things for the good of them that love him. For the good of them who are called according to his purpose. Our address, physical services, 106 9th Road, King in Johannesburg. My number is plus 27824569264. You shall surely be blessed. May God bless you and I look forward to receiving you. Amen. He has died for you to remove condemnation from your life.